I want to take a few moments and cover some new updates to Lightroom today. Both mobile and desktop got updates. Really, it's the mobile apps for both Android and iOS that saw some significant updates. I had planned to put out a video on Snapseed mobile editing today uh, because I do prefer that program, or I should say, I have preferred that program to Lightroom Mobile, but today Lightroom, with these new updates, becomes a much more compelling option for doing my editing uh, in a mobile device or on a mobile device. Now, the, basically the same features on Android and iOS. However, as far as I can tell, Lightroom now seems completely free on iOS. You do not have to have a Creative Cloud subscription. You do still need one on Android. I don't know why that difference, and I imagine they'll update it soon so that Android is completely free as well. If not, that's totally crappy, and we should all let them know uh, as soon as possible that we are unhappy with this dichotomy and difference between Android uh, and iOS. Now, I've Wi-Fi'd a picture from my Sony over to my LG G4, and we're just going to walk through some of the new features. And the first new features that we have are all underneath the uh, little camera icon on the far left for this picture. And we've got a lot of different options in here as well that we can make changes to, very similar to the desktop version. Um, but we want to go here to the advanced section. And we have three options, tone curve, vignette, and color. Let's start with color first. This is quite powerful and, again, something that I love using on the desktop version. We can now dial in the hue, saturation, and luminance for these individual colors you see across the screen. So I've got a picture I took this weekend. Uh, some of the fall colors are just starting to come out. And you know, the camera doesn't always quite record as accurately as I would like. So I'm going to uh, increase the saturation of our fall colors a little bit. So I'm gonna raise our reds and our oranges and our yellows just a little bit. And maybe come in here into the luminance, which is, you can consider it the brightness value of these colors, and probably increase them as well. I'm just gonna play with that, and let's see, can we? Yes, we can pinch to zoom in so we can see a little bit better what we're doing there. I'm gonna be extreme for a minute and just bring all of these up, and you can see how much brighter they get. Let's bring them all down and you can see the pretty significant difference. So again, just kind of increasing this brightness just a little bit. Oh, look like Lightroom crashed. That's one of the reasons why I typically prefer Snapseed. It does not crash on me. So let's go back into this wonderful picture. Scroll down to the picture I was working on, and I wonder if it made any chines of saves to this. Let's come back in here and go back into the color, and it looks like it did not. So let's try adjusting these again and see maybe if we won't make it crash so much this time. So we seem to actually have lost some of that. Let's come back in here and bring this up a little bit more. Oh, I know, I didn't want to shift the hue. There we go, we want to bring the yellow down. So the hue, you are shifting from one region to the next. So you bring it down, you're shifting it closer to the color to its left. You bring it up, you're shifting it closer to the color on its right. So we want to kind of do the same thing with the orange, not too much. I much prefer this over just kind of increasing the saturation overall. This does look a little, this is a little too much. Um, because you want to keep the greens as realistic as possible. As soon as you blow out the greens in a kind of oversaturated way, I don't think it looks very good and it looks kind of fake. But here we have a believable scene. This is a little bit similar to how I remember it. I'm just trying to undo that just a little bit because it does, it's a little overdone for my tastes. Yeah, right here too. Let's bring the saturations back down a little bit. And the luminance I'm gonna bring, well, you know, Right around there, that looks good. So our other setting in here is the tone curve. This is another feature that we talk about a lot in our Lightroom for Beginners video. We really go in depth on how to use this, or Christina does. Uh, and similar to that tool, you can drag your individual points and just notice how that makes the image pop that much more. Instead of adding contrast over the whole image, I'm really adding it in the shadow regions and I can bring my white points over to the left a little bit and really kind of 
increase the tonal value of this image without increasing all of it. So if you find that little tone curve, I'm using my finger right here, uh, difficult to navigate, you can just simply come down into each of these boxes, highlights, lights, dark shadows, and you can manipulate the slider along that region as well. So I think this is looking quite nice. One other tool that's been added here is the vignette tool. So we can click on the amount and let me share a personal opinion with you. Never, ever, ever, ever drag to the right. That looks terrible and it looks like you took a picture in 2001. You can go to the left. This is a nice technique that can add a little bit of darkening around the edges, something that we often want to get rid of, but in some situations adding it can help increase the focus on your subject. Uh, I often do this with Instagram. If I've cropped it to square, I've lost some of the natural vignetting, which can look good at times. And so I'll put this back. In this case, in this image, I think a little bit is fine. I, you know, it doesn't really need it either way. Um, so there we go, tone curve, vignette, and color. And of course, we've got the basic options in here that we can make changes to as well. So I might come over to our clarity and add just a little bit more clarity to this image as well. And then from there I can share it out wherever I like. Now the new features on iOS that I just want to mention is you now do have the dehaze adjustment tool. You don't have that on Android. You also have easy kind of switch over. You can take your photos over to that Photoshop Fix app and you can also take your photos over to that Premiere Clip app and as they say Craft amazing video stories from your Lightroom photos. Sync to the beat of your favorite music with one tap access to Premiere Clip. So that's all options on the iOS side of things. So this was a quick look at the mobile. Let's take a close look now at the changes in the desktop, which there are just really two. Import dialog has been changed. Previously, when you hit import, you came into this kind of I don't want to say it was a complicated screen, but it had a lot going on. We're going to actually get back to that screen in a second. But now when you hit import, the first thing you're presented with is this big, pretty image with a place to select your sources from, including what most of us often choose, the card. Once you hit that, you're then popped into a screen that looks very similar to the one before. Let me hide the advance because by default that is hidden. Um, but now you have a slightly cleaner look to it, a few less options presented uh, straight away. So again, you have the device you're importing from here on the left. You have the images that you're importing. And over here on the right, you have all of these little options that, similar to what you had before. Now, we go into in depth into these options in the Photoshop for beginner, sorry, Lightroom for beginners guide. Uh, but under advanced, I just want to make sure that everything is still as is. Uh, these are my general recommended settings, the develop base preset that we provide in that Lightroom for Beginners Guide, uh, and into a subfolder with a date. And now, I, you know, I honestly can't remember. I believe this ad copyright info is new because in the tutorial, I explained that you should set up a metadata preset that includes your copyright that's automatically written into there. But it looks like they put it front and center now and give you that option right here in the keywords and metadata. So all this looks good. I'm just going to hit cancel because these images have already come in. Now, the other option or the other new feature that I want to show you in Lightroom uh, 2015.2 release is in the develop module, dehaze. Now, this is not it. This was introduced in the last version update, and that allows you to really kind of remove the haze in an image. Uh, we've got some, you know, haze, a little bit of mist, a little bit of clouds in the background. And by increasing the dehaze amount, we can remove it. This can be somewhat of a heavy handed option though, because it does apply to the whole image. So the new update allows for a local area adjustment that is dehazing. So we have our effect here listed under dehaze. Uh, and then we have the amount right here. Now remember, whenever we're working with a local area adjustment, we're working with a brush. And so that brush has options as well. The size of the brush, which can be also controlled with the bracket keys, and the feathering of the brush. If you watch, you can see that those inner and outer circles contract. So between those is a uh, lessening of the effect from 100% to 0% feathering, if you will. 
and a flow. How quickly do we want to apply this uh, effect? So I usually leave mine around 50 or so in cases like this where I want to be somewhat subtle. Um, my size, it's a little big. Let's come down a little bit. And then my dehaze amount of 25, I think that's a good number to start with. So I'm just going to paint a little bit back here in this area. And I think that looks pretty good. It's just bringing the detail out of that hazy area, or I should say it's decreasing the haze in those areas. Now, I don't need to do it up in the sky because there's no extra detail to get out of up there in the sky. But this land through here I want. Again, uh, we can come down and say show selected mask overlay to see how well we're doing applying it to this area and I can leave that on. I can also show you um, how much you've applied, the uh, opacity of that red will show you how much you've flown, flowed onto the document or the image. So that looks pretty good. Now remember, you can make other adjustments to these local area brushes when you have them selected. So maybe I want to warm this up just a little to try to counteract that blue that seems to be coming out, just to kind of balance it with the rest of the images to some degree. And maybe add a little bit of contrast as well to just further pop that detail that's back there. And that's really it. So big change, import dialog box looks a lot different. It really feels like they're trying to make this program much more approachable to the new user. And the dehaze is now a local area adjustment. If you found this video helpful, you can give it a quick thumbs up. And if you aren't already a subscriber, take a moment to hit the subscribe button. If you would like to check out our Photoshop for, sorry, Lightroom for Beginners guide, you can go to photorec.tv shop. There's a link right down below. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.